And then you call up collect again with uh, your key and value from your output, and that writes down to a text file. So what you get is a text file that's just a giant hash map that you can then dump into Excel. Um, and we use like comma to separate all of the variables in our value. So you get a giant Excel spreadsheet that you can then dump into uh, a graph or something like that. All right, so next we're basically going to run through the same program again, but in Python. Python's a little different because it doesn't go through, when you run anything through streaming, it doesn't go through the copy and sort phase. You basically have to do that all yourself. So uh, we need a couple tools when you're doing it in Python. You need group by and item getter. And uh, basically wrote the same thing for reading the input, which is called the read mapper output. So for line and mapper, you have to group all the users together by a single by, by each key. So that's what this function does. It basically gives you a user and an array of, val array of values grouped by the user key. Basically the same thing in Java, except you have to do it yourself. Uh, so you do the same thing. You start to make, uh, set some initializers. And you iterate through each value in the group. And you can go and split it by a comma. And you basically uh, add one for the ratings, add total ratings, and the total delay. And then after we add all of them up, we can do some averages and output final output. And again, you have to output sys.standardEarror, report counter, reducer, comma one. So that outputs a standard error. If you don't do that, your jobs will get killed by the master node because you have to report back every so often or the master node will think your node is dropped off the network and it'll just rebatch out your job to the next available node. Um, here's a reducer comparison. Um, you've got Java running in two minutes and 58 seconds, Python running in eight minutes 45. So you can see there's uh, a decent amount of overhead that you incur uh, using the streaming interface. All right, so um, a couple of the other projects. Um, this is all the results of a class that I took at ASU on uh, cloud computing. Uh, one of the other students did an image processing algorithm, which is really interesting because Hadoop is completely based around text files. It's not built for images. And um, because all your data gets split on line breaks, so that's really not good for working with binary files. So uh, Jeff Connor and Douglas Fuller extended the file input format interface to deal with images. Uh, here's some of the results of the project they did running this through Hadoop. Here's the first image they did. They did a candy edge detection algorithm. So you can see it pulls out. You can't really see too well in here uh, because of how bright it is, but all these lines in here are all outlined in this image. Um, and then this was just a different edge detection algorithm. What they were trying to do was a blob detection algorithm so that you could take massive like NASA data sets of the surface of the Earth and find things that match a picture of something else. And uh, Hadoop's a really good framework for doing that. Um, so we needed a really good project to present on at DEF CON for MapReduce. So uh, <laughs> we went and got 405 users complete walls from Facebook. Um, and we ran them through a few different MapReduce programs. Uh, all the users were part of a college network, so you're really looking at a target group of college kids. Uh, the date ranges were from uh, November 1st, 2004, and then we cut everything off at March 30th, 2009. So you're looking at about four years of Facebook wall posts across the entire data set. Uh, you have 227,000 unique posts in that data set. Uh, about 76,000 of those posts were status updates that people had. Uh, here's a, a really cool graph. So this right here is November of 2004. That's March of 2009. And this is the number of posts per day. Uh, the red is just total posts. The green is the amount of status updates overlaid over that. So you can see the uh, giant ramp up here in August of 06, where a ton of people just joined the network, um, where Facebook introduced the ability to post statuses, didn't really catch on, and then they uh, introduced the ability to comment on people's statuses. All of a sudden, people got crazy with that. Um, this giant line here, where it breaks 600, this is really fun just trying to figure out what all these different numbers mean. Um, 
That we found was two days before that, Facebook released the Facebook for iPhone app. So it took two days. That's kind of what we believe this line is. It took two days to hit network saturation for all the users in our data set to grab that app. They used it for a day and then dropped off really fast. <laughs> um, so if you were to take uh, all the people on your friends list and you wanted to get the maximum amount of exposure for something, let's say you made a video of your DEF CON speech and you want the most amount of people in your Facebook friends list to see it, where would you post it? So here's the post per day, giant pie chart. So from our network, all the people that we grabbed, you can see that 49% of activity happens on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you probably want to post something right here uh, and ride this curve around rather than this curve. Uh, so we try to figure out exactly where we would post that. Here's uh, 0 through 23 uh, hours of the day, and then you have your days of the week. So this is an hourly breakdown by day of the week of number of posts. So what you really want to ride is this giant red curve up here. So if you post it about here, you're going to ride that all the way through and grab the most amount of exposure. If you were to post something here on like Thursday at 4 p.m., you're going to ride this curve down and miss out on all this exposure. So um, a lot of the implications of this, you're really looking at micro-marketing, knowing exactly who your target audience is, how they interact with people. Um, at ASU, they do a lot of human-computer interaction studies. What we're trying to do is human-computer-human -human interaction studies, so how people interact with each other on a computer. Um, okay. So uh, we decided to run word count. Fun little program. So um, if you go and look up all the documentation on Hadoop, uh, when we were in the class learning about it, Word count is the only example that you find on the internet anywhere. It's the only piece of code you'll find, and it just, uh, all it does is it maps every word in an input data set to the value one, and then reducer just adds up all the values. So you literally just count the number of times each word was used. So here's the output of word count from our data set. As you can see, it's all basically is I happy, happy birthday. You can basically open any file and you would see happy birthday at least 10 times. Um, so we basically went through and I did word count. We were, go we were going to uh, try to do some uh, regular expressions to try to find every single phone number in the data set. But as it turned out, we ran word count and since it's already sorted, um, it's, they were all right there, all lined up. We basically had like, 40 or 50 numbers that you can't even find on their info pages. So that's a real cool way to uh, get a bunch of numbers and emails and stuff like that. We found a bunch of crazy words. Um, yeah, we found uh, one post that had uh, uh, bin slash bash in it. All kinds of random stuff. Yeah, just a bunch of random things. Um, yeah, that was from Joey's page, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, we just want to say thanks to ASU for letting us use our cluster, teach us about all this stuff, uh, all these people. The class was taught uh, in a joint collaboration by three people. We had the CTO of ASU, Dr. Adrian Sanier. Uh, he had Dr. Dan Stanzione. He uh, runs the whole cluster for the School of Engineering. Then we had Dr. Ragu Santanam. He's an associate professor in the business school. Um, the class was really interesting because it was a giant mixture of uh, there was about 20 grad students and 10 undergrads, and then half of them were business students and half of them were engineers. So it was just a really interesting forum of a bunch of people with a bunch of different ideas trying to figure out how to deal with the do. So thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of DEF CON. Check out the website. paper on a bunch of the stuff that we found in Facebook, so check that out probably next week, next couple of weeks here.